Revelation 492. From the 1st of July 1938 and the 2nd of July 1938. Proclamation about Divine Intervention. Many a man will be given the truths, but he will reject them unbelievingly, because everything in him longs to go through life free and unbound. If now the Lord calls this one's attention and his spirit stubbornly turns away and strictly refuses the acceptance of such truths, then only coercions are left to the Lord for him to seriously reflect on his purpose of existence through all kinds of trials. And nevertheless also very many do not follow such hints. They prefer to face all adversity with contempt for death but do not change themselves in their view in the least. To these particularly stubborn earthly children, the law will also have to come up with special signs, so that their life theories are shaken and they suddenly and helplessly face the work of nature. And in his mercy and gentleness, the Lord tries to influence all who walk on earth. The world has already appropriated too much for itself it has already become so independent of God's grace. It only accepts its earthly knowledge, its earthly explanations for everything incomprehensible. It wants to instruct people with a view that deviates far from the truth in order to make them compliant to its material desires. Because where today a teaching establishes itself, which first gives God their honor and only prescribes to man the duties towards God, there the earthly power is broken off, and this is to be prevented at all costs. The 2nd of July 1938, and so it will happen that soon the doors will open for the word which the Lord himself has taught on earth. And so the belief in it will be stronger than the belief in earthly power. Much sooner will those change in their views before an earthly person familiar with the word of God would separate himself from it. It will be all the same what is offered to you from earthly side. Everything remains completely worthless compared to what the Lord himself gave to you. Which you are to keep as given by God until all eternity. The last judgment promises mercy to those who have erred in ignorance of God's teachings but the number of those will be small, for now attention is being drawn everywhere to the great question about the relationship of the earthly child to its creator, and about the deity of Jesus Christ. Will anyone be able to remain in complete ignorance of the current efforts to destroy everything and still set something completely new in motion instead? Is not rather everyone so interested in it? because it concerns the salvation of each individual. The whole mystery of the incarnation of Christ has just been revealed so obviously, people only need to keep their eyes and ears open, and this burning question will not pass anyone by. Whether everyone recognizes the importance of this question equally, seriously, whether they are aware that their salvation depends on the solution of this question that they sacrifice everything for the new time if they do not come closer to the core of the matter that lies solely in the will of each individual. God gave the people prophets at every time. He also let them draw attention and announced himself through events of every kind but the wiser mankind thinks, the more obstinately it closes itself to such indications and revelations from the world beyond. It is much easier to turn people to a new thing by earthly promises than to lead them to the light with pure divine truth, because this does not glitter and shine like all the earthly advantages offered to people. The simpler and more natural a teaching is, the less appeal it has. Christ taught man nothing more than love, love for God and neighbor, and offered the most glorious, eternal bliss, in return. But since this is not tangibly before man's eyes, his earthly well-being takes precedence over it. He strives to raise and improve it, and does not consider the plight of the soul after death. And so he gives in to the desire of the world in everything and consequently becomes more and more captivated by the world. 
he lets earthly advantages be the driving force of his actions and thoughts everywhere and leaves the faith, which offers him nothing tangible for this lifetime. But every power, if it senses this, uses the opportunity and arrogates to itself all the rights, which only God is entitled to. Who thinks about it, will also soon recognize that nothing earthly is permanent. Even if it would be it so well and brilliantly strengthened, still the Lord has the sole right over life and death and the power to destroy matter or to let it perish. And so the struggle always begins where the highest entity feels compelled to intervene against encroachments that turn against the very highest deity, against the commandments and against the deity's teachings. For the earthly life alone man really does not need faith because what would be the point of a shorter or longer life, if it would have its end with the bodily death, whether a man would have completed the life in this or that view, would be so completely indifferent. But can you bring only the slightest valid proof for the fact that the life is really finished then? Think about it in every dispute, whether it would be possible for you to provide evidence for your views. Think about it, that you should also never provide evidence for Christ's teachings to be worthless, and if you are not quite sure, turn to the Almighty, so that he may give you a little light, and he will truly not let you ask in vain. But what you want to initiate out of your intellect, is horrible error, which will cover your soul in deepest darkness and make the redemption from it unspeakably difficult for you. Gratefully accept from God what he sends you and pay attention to the signs and words that come from above, and do not judge where you lack the gift for it, and so pay attention to the next time when the Lord sends you visible warnings to guide you on the right path, you who are about to enter the path into the abyss, and then call on the Father in heaven for enlightenment. Amen.